Hello, I'm going to try to show you how to use some of the uh, scripts that are referred to in this Facebook page, which is called Piano Data for Spectral Analysis. Uh, the idea of this page is to show people where they can go get data to do analysis on and also to show the results of some of the analysis. I'm hoping that people will collect some data, stick it out on, say, BoxNet, and then tell about it on this Facebook page. Uh, there's some examples here. Um, here's, for example, a, a post about where the data is located for one example that I've got. Uh, there's also a reference here to some YouTube videos for how you might go about collecting the data, again using MATLAB, actually using MATLAB Home, which is now available for a lot less money than just a regular MATLAB. Here's a, a post showing several graphs that I generated using a script that is also available. Here's another script, here's another graph that I generated using yet another script. This is, for example, here it is, rails back for one file dot m. And here's a cumulative, cumulative line spectrum map that I generated using another script. Here, make sl, make clsm dot m. And I'm not going to go through what these graphs mean because that's the topic of another subject, another time. But I want to show you the other website here, up here, uh, for analysis of sound and vibrations. And if you take a look at MATLAB support scripts, you see here a bunch of scripts that you can download. Uh, it tells how to do it right up here into your computer. And then you can run them using MATLAB Home. Okay, let's go to an example of such a script. I'm going to bring up MATLAB now. I have uh, the, the font set to be bold and to be large, so it comes across on the screen. It's larger and it's bolder than you would normally do. I'm going to run a script that's referred to on that Facebook page called Analyze Away from File. This reads in a, a file for a particular note and does several graphical analyses on it. I'm going to start to activate this script by clicking on the Run icon up here. So run Analyze File. Click. Okay. Enter the directory containing the file or the wave. Okay. I have taken the, the data off of the BoxNet folder that I referred to in that Facebook page and stuck it on a directory in C by computer called temp. And here are all the files that are in there. There's a file, a mat file, for every key. And I'm going to pick one of these keys and we're going to look at it. Let's pick C3 sharp, for example. Okay, enter the directory. First we've got to tell where it's at. And it's temp, I said. Enter the name of the file. Okay, what did I say? C3 sharp. Okay, this, this reads that file in there and, and also looks at all the other variables that are in MATLAB's workspace right now. The idea is to pick out the name of the variable that was read in. And it's YC, because sometimes when you save this data, you're going to save a different file, a different variable name. So just a way to make it simpler. Here's, here it is, because you can see it's 448703. That's 400,000 samples of C3 sharp. Okay, the variable name is YC that I got from this list here. Enter the name for the titles of the graphs I'm going to generate. I'll call it Kanabi because that's the name that's the name of the piano I got it from. Kanabi C3 sharp. Estimated frequency, fundamental frequency. Let's see. C3 sharp is 138.6.
enter the center and do the fine grid line spectrum. I'm going to uh, look at the first partials, first partial, so I'll say 1386 again, although I could have stuck anything out there. Max, freaks for plot, max frequency for plotting the spectrum, spectra. Uh, let's go all the way up to 5,000 for this thing. Yeah, 6,000. We can always come back and do this differently. This is the minimum power that on the spectrogram. I'll mention that later. Uh, we'll just use the default value that's shown here. This is for the line spectrum plot, 90 dB or minus 90 dB. I'm going to use that default too. Okay, the duration of the wave that I just read in is 10 seconds. And C3, I doubt if I need all that. And if I do use all of it, it's going to take more time to make some of the computations. So I'm going to take five seconds worth only. Okay, there's the first graph, second graph, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Okay, seven. Seven graphs. Let's go back and take a look at them one at a time. Okay, the very first one was the time trace. I chose five seconds. You can see the, the wave pretty much dies out to background noise by five seconds. Here's the root mean square of the wave. Again, it died away pretty quickly. So I, my choice of five seconds is probably okay. Figure two. Here's the line spectrum. I got it in uh, linear units and decibels. Let's take a look at uh, where the first partial occurs. Okay, it occurs at about 137.5, which is not, that's pretty close to where you'd expect. The fundamental was 137.1, wasn't it? No, 138.6, so it's a little bit flat. I did this by clicking on the expand button up there. All right, that's figure two. Let's figure three here. Okay, this is the line spectrum again in decibels, and I also plot the cumulative line spectrum. I'm not going to talk about where these things came from or how you get them or what they mean because that's, again, the topic of another time. Okay, figure four. Here's the fine grid line spectrum, FGLS. And I plot the red line here, which is the fundamental. And you can see that the peak occurs a little bit flat of the fundamental. And you can see it's about oh, probably almost 15 cents flat. So I'm plotting frequency in cents here and up here in hertz. Okay, let's do uh, five. Here's the spectrogram. Looks like my choice of 6,000 hertz was a bit liberal. I could have I could have used probably 4,000 nicely. You can see you could also move this graph around if you want to. This button up there. Kind of shows how fast some of those partials die away. Okay, let's take a look at uh, six. Here's the autocorrelation. And uh, I'm not, again, I'm not going to try to explain what that is, but I did plot a red line at the expected time lag associated with the fundamental. It turns out that's pretty close because that first big peak occurs right at the fundamental. Looks like it occurs at uh, almost 7.2. Seven point two three. So if I calculate this frequency associated with that, seven point two three in milliseconds. Got to invert it and I multiply by a thousand. One thirty eight point three. So this says that the uh, pitch from the autocorrelation is one thirty eight point three. Here's a a peak down here which is much less. In strength, it's associated with uh, the uh, higher harmonics, higher partials. And I think I got one more here. Oh yeah, here's the tone center. Shows how the tone center varies with time. 
you know what the tone center is. Basically, it's a, the, the spectral centroid. And you can see the, the, the fundamental is 138 hertz. Tone center is much higher because of uh, all the power in the higher harmonics as shown by the line spectrum. Okay, that, that shows how to use one of these scripts. And uh, I hope you will take advantage of this and go to this website, download the appropriate script, uh, pick out the uh, variables from the BoxNet file, and load them in your computer, and run some scripts and see what you can get. And then maybe post the results on uh, this Facebook page. All right. That concludes my presentation, and I thank you for watching and listening.